Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more sorcery. Now, one of my kind viewers suggested that there is a way of dealing with this problem and I'm pretty sure I tried it already. He said that I could cast Dop in a room up above and use the light coming in through the doorway that filters down the stairs and I'm pretty sure I did that. So I'm going to just check. Go down the stairs, in the dark. Sure. I'm pretty sure I cast Dop, went down the stairs and the light didn't help. And I was stuck in the same situation. But I'll try. I'll try. So obviously door O. Pen. The door is now open. I will head down the stairs. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Door is already open. Oh, well, I don't need to do that then. Uh, in that case, no. Walk into the tomb. Which tomb is tomb? Okay, fine. Yeah, we'll do here. So move towards the stairs. Then the door shuts. Let it close. Well, I'm here in the dark, in the crypt. I'm going to cast a spell. And we all know which one it is by now. <laughs> we got a pretty good idea, right? Uh, you chill, delight as moonlight shines into the crypt. Make a move. Rats run across shoes, down the stairs. You head for the stairs once more, but the light from the doorway does not go far. Halfway down, the dark is absolute once more. So then I went down the stairs. Uh, and I was in this same situation of all the results leading to an auto kill. Uh, let's try to keep going. Fight. Uh, struggle, stream, or pray, whatever it was, it's uh, an auto kill. So, yeah, it doesn't seem to work. So I have a plan. And I'm going to blatantly utilize the most powerful spell in the game. And I'm going to go back, all the way back, way, 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 way back here. And all the way to here. Leave the prison, a junction, yes. So there we are. That way I'm back up to 17 gold and one ration. I've... I've, yeah, I've, I've got the clues from the prison, from the dice game. Now, he also suggested that the lovely people at Inkle have allowed all three paths here to meet up and interact and I can go round and doing things in whatever way I want, but that as time passes, some earlier encounters become unavailable and later ones become available. He recommended heading up the, the middle and the right first before going left. Now, what am I thinking? I'm thinking, first off, I gave one portion of food to the beggar outside the city. I give the second, I can use the second one here when I rest. However, I'm very near full health anyway. So if I, if I take a bit of damage from resting and then get it back the next day, if I can get some more, um, some more rations that way. Right. Um, and then with my large amount of money, 
I can venture through the city not buying up rations with my one ration for tomorrow which will help stave off hunger there and then if I have to go through the sewer to cross the river again down the well if that's the way I have to go I haven't wasted any money on food and then the next day I could do stuff you know come around here uh, down here to the marketplace and buy some food with all the money and it would not have been wasted by the river so obviously I don't want to walk into the guards training ground so I will stay the night at the inn because of the wild beast I can hear outside. Ah yes, the crooked finger. I remember it well. And I will gamble with the bartender, utilising the gem studded collar that I had from before. And this... Hey, need to eat. No oh, food here. Okay, fine. Uh play spindle stones and this is where there's going to be a rather expected jump cut because you don't want to see me play for ages against the innkeeper see you soon okay the innkeeper has been vanquished at a game of dice i'm in the inn room and i'm going to save my food for tomorrow just in case you do not need to eat more today the sounds of the city drift to you in the night air shouts and screams and the occasional distinct howl you doze fitfully turning over in your mind what the old man told you of the four spell lines required to open the north gate Your dreams, when they come, are of the wall. Like a towering monster drenched in moss and slime, the gate its wide open moor. On its back is a host of guards chanting a mantra too quietly for you to hear. Meanwhile, the one armed prisoner throws the knuckles of his missing hand onto the bench over and over, calling endlessly to himself. And it is as though you can see the crown sitting in the dust on the far side of the north gates, so close and yet out of reach. In the morning, it's time to leave the inn. I'll, uh, I'll ask about food again. And he suggests the flayer's hut, middle road up through the fields. He does a good stew. Now, outside the air tastes fresh. It has rained a little overnight. A little distance from here, a busy crossroads marks the start of the city. Um, my viewer also suggested I check that crate. So I'll look around, look in all the directions, look left, look right. Look straight ahead and look in the crate that has fallen off the back of a wagon. Just at that moment a cart rolls down the road from the right and careens around the corner to take the main track ahead. On its back are stacked several crates. One teeters for a moment then falls near your feet, its lid cracking open. Oh, I'll wave at him, hey! hey! You wave for the driver to stop, but they do not see you. The cart rattles away up the road. You notice a purple liquid leaking from the side of the crate. I'll look and hope it's not something really bad. Kneeling down in the mud, you prise open the crate with your fingers. Inside is a pile of smashed bottles. Thick purple liquid swills about, littered with shards of glass. There are perhaps four bottles still intact, but you recognise the smell. It is blimbery. The smell, even. It is blimbery, a potion with many healing properties. 
I can take four bottles or I could take two. If I take four... What's the downside to taking four? Could one of them be broken and, like, spoil my rations leaking later on? Um, all, all one of them, my, uh, my bomba fruit, which hasn't been eaten yet. I have a feeling I shouldn't be overly greedy. Or maybe somebody will go, Oh, you greedy git, give us some. So I'm just going to take two to be cautious. You take two of the bottles, wipe them down as best you can on the grass nearby and put them into your pack. A lucky find indeed. Blimbury juice will heal you and will also do for a meal. Great. So, last time I went left and ran into a group of guards, which caused a problem. The Black Elves smoking the hooker, which is an encounter I remember from the original book, was this way. Um... This way we have the Festival of Thieves, and somewhere around here we got the man who... The, the, the many part man of all the body parts. Um, he suggested going straight ahead first. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. First time I played this book, The Inkle Version, I went right. I went around this way and ended up somehow making it up to the inn here, trying to swim across the sea, getting caught in the boats, and uh, it didn't end well. So I've gone left, I've gone right. This time I think I'll go straight ahead, as suggested, and see what takes place. Although... Ooh. Attempting to go to the right. Um, well, I can try straight ahead this time. I mean, we're literally playing by the fighting fantasy rule there, but you never know. You stay on the main road, which rises up a slight slope to reach a small settlement of poor huts. As you pass these homes, ugly creatures gather to watch you in silence. A little further on, you come across a body lying face down in a gutter. A beggar asleep, or some sort of creature in a drunken stupor. I'll check if he's alive. You approach the limp body cautiously. Nobody on the street seems to be taking any notice. You bend down closer and shake the shoulder of the body. There is no response. Well, hey, I'll roll him over. See if he's obviously dead. You grip the body's arm and turn it over. As its face swings round, you jump back aghast. The body is a semi-decayed corpse with a rotting half that is a, with a rotting head that is half skull, half putrid flesh, and worse, an evil smile is spread across its face. A moment later, it has sprung to its feet, leaping at you. Oh, this, this is the, the man, isn't it? Uh, I could cast a spell. I think I'll fight this time. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm going to go for it. Yes, it's the bodies, the body parts. <laughs> oh, memories. Great picture. Great picture, by the way. You draw your sword and inflict a quick blow. The blade lands deeper than you expected, slicing the corpse right down the middle. It collapses into a bloody mess of arms, legs and head. But a moment later, the body parts are lifted from the ground to surround you, clawing, biting, kicking and shoving. It will be really interesting to see how Inkle handles this, because all of their fights have been against a single opponent so far. And look at that cat there. That is a, that is a tense looking cat. Look at the arch of that spine. Uh, what spells are available? Because I'm imagining any damage dealing spell, uh, hot might hit the whole thing. Uh, Pop, explosion, sure, because I'm now fighting all six body parts. Six. That would actually be really useful. Right, because that would allow me to... Yeah! Yeah! 
You cast a spell, creating five clones of yourself who fan out to stand on either side of you. Without the need for agreement, each tackles a different piece of the corpse. The battle is finished with six single strokes. The body parts on the ground squirm and slowly ooze back together. The corpse now looks once again as though it had been run over in a chariot race. But it is definitely lying still, for now at least. Well, I'm going to search for body. Expecting another immediate attack, you go over to search for body, but it is clothed in rags and has barely any pockets, let alone anything inside them. Uh, if I'm going to look in the throat, I might as well search for mouth on the way there, right? Um, I'll look under his belt first. It's a bit more realistic. You unstrap the corpse's rotten belt to see if it has anything secured underneath it. Nothing. From a nearby doorway, a face appears and beckons you over. Um, can't I continue searching the body? Apparently not. I may have missed something really important there, given what I was given so many clues. Okay, let's see what it is. You stride over to the hut. The face is that of a small gnome who begins to chatter in a high-pitched voice. You killed it! Did you kill it? I I, I think you killed it. Uh, I think it was dead before, but yeah, I killed it. It's it's wonderful, the gnome says. We're s saved. It, it'll be a good 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 few months until it wakes up again. We'll cut in somewhere else. Here, here. we w w wanted to thank you. He reaches behind him for something. I'll wait and see what he does. And let's hope it's not a trap. You wait and the gnome produces a small bag containing five gold pieces. I'm sure it's n n not much to a man like you, he apologises, but, but it's from all of us. Peering through the window of the tiny hut, you make out twenty or so faces. Um, it'll do, you reply curtly. Um... What was that creature? Hey, start with something obvious. What was that creature, you ask? They say you used to be the second noble of Kar, and you stopped me searching him, the gnome whispers. But he angered the first, so he was cursed to, to live in Kar forever. Now he's like a b b bad, bad, bad gold piece, keeps showing up. He, he gets dumped into d d d different parts of the city. I, I think we'll take him to the swing, they'll take him to the swing quarter next. It it's their t turn. There's a chuckle of agreement from inside the house. Uh, I'll ask about the spell lines. Now, maybe you can help me. Do any of you know any of the spells for North Gate, you ask? The gnome bursts into laughter, laughing so hard, in fact, that he begins to cry. Do I look like a knob? He asks. Do I? Uh, well, you look like your ears pretty close to the ground, and um, there's a dead second noble outside. The gnome nods at that. True, true, but to know the lines, you have to go go lower than that. Not all the noble, nobles are even alive anymore. He scratches his nose meaningfully, although he means... Although what he means is anyone's guess. Anyway, you could ask the p p priest at the sh sh shrine. He, he might be able to help. The gnome is starting to look awkward. Uh, what priest? The p p priest! The priest! The, the, the gnome shrieks, alarmed by your sharp response. He waggles a nervous nose up in up the road somewhere. N -n 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 the, do 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 the gnome's nose twitches. I'm g -g going now, he says quickly. Here's one more g -g gift. There is more kerfuffle, and then he brings out three pebbles. You're a sorcerer, he wibbles. He whispers. Wibbles? <laughs> And, and these are good for taking p p p p pot shots, so I hear. And he winks. You thank him and place the gift carefully in your pack. Then you continue away up the street. So, dead noble, no clue. What a bother. You continue along the road. On one side, the buildings are replaced by meagre patches of field, roughly fenced and housing small skinny cattle. It is too quiet with no one about. I better should have searched for throat instead of the mouth or the belt. 
I was like hoping I'd have more time, but oh well. This part of the city port is barely inhabited and certainly not somewhere the nobles would be found. But you may be able to learn some useful information from inhabitants all the same. You pass by a large structure with its doors wide open. The smell of incense floats out from within. A shrine of some kind? Um, I still think he was talking about the priest of slang, the liar, but I'll look at the building. You stop and peer inside, but make out nothing but darkness. It seems to be a wide, unlit space. The low sound of chanting floats out into the street. A woman's voice. So that would be the priestess, not the priest. But if I go inside and find out what's going on, just being inquisitive. You step into the gloomy shade of the building. The aroma of perfume and oil grows so thick that you begin to cough and choke, announcing your presence to whoever is inside. The singing voice falls silent. Who's there? You call out to the darkness. There is no reply, just a quiet sound like a light footstep or the turning page of a book. Then there is a voice. Greetings, man of Anna-land. I see you are a bold type. Well, I say nothing but uh, greetings, you answer. The voice laughs, a gentle pealing sound like a chime. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I see you are searching for something. Uh, yeah, I'm after the North Gate spell, you reply. Is that so? That is forbidden knowledge. <laughs> the voice laughs again. There is that noise again, like a palm slapping down. I see difficulty upon difficulty. Ask her to show herself. She obviously doesn't want to. Are they footsteps coming closer? Some kind of barefooted creature. Can you help? I, I sense this is some kind of magical, unusual encounter. Another slap. It is the sound of a card being turned from a deck. Tell me, she says. Speak a word and I will tell you what I see. Gate is obvious. Crown is obvious. Um, hmm. Obviously, the crown is the ultimate goal of the quest. I want to know about the gate. But I think asking about the crown might be... A no, no, no. I'll, um, I'll be more direct. She seems to like that. Gate. I see a closed door. I see a whispered secret. I see a trap of fire. Magic. I see a dead end, a closed door. I see a wise man, but the card is reversed. This means death. I see a snake that eats its own tail. Noble. I see a grave. I see a ghost who walks. I see a wise man. Suddenly, from the far end of the room, a single candle flame ignites. A shade has been lifted from a lamp, revealing a woman in a deep hood seated at a star-shaped table. She is staring at the cards laid out in front of her. I'll look at the cards. Through the gloom, you can make out very little of them. <gasps> you seek the crown of kings, the woman gasps suddenly. You intend to conquer the old world. Uh, I seek to save it, you reply. Nothing will save it. The damage is done. It would be better if the crown were dropped into the sea. Remember this. Who are you? You ask, stepping forward. The woman looks up with deep eyes. A long scar runs across her face from mouth to left ear. I see things, she says, things that not all wish to hear. Well, I would like to hear what you have to say. She nods. 
You are wise. She turns another card, a movement that is almost involuntary. Then she looks up at you. Remember this. The crown is not in car, but there are many who claim it is, and only one who is deceived. Only one truly believes. Oh, so the first noble of Kaar is searching for the crown, and that's why he's defeating all the other nobles, to, so that they can't oppose him. You thank her for her mysterious warning, but her attention is lost once more, taken by the cracks in the flagstone floor on which she sits. The streets will burn, she murmurs. The wolves must be turned around. You leave her to her dark vision. You step back out onto the path and continue on your journey. By encountering her, and by choosing those words, have I set certain events in motion? I don't know. I suppose I'll just have to find out. The main road continues up for a small, up a small rise between small fields. Since no one can leave the walls of Kar, the citizens do their farming inside the walls as best they can. From the field to your right you hear a groan, to your left a narrow path winds away. I'll look for the source of the noise. Half a dozen fat pigs are grubbing in the muck to the right. Just beyond them a group of creatures huddled around a f huddle around a fire pit from which there drifts a mouth-watering smell. I'll look at the creatures. Car seems to be filled with creatures you can't place half one thing and half another, but from the way the strange creatures at the fire pit sit and talk, it seems they do not see their own differences. One sees you, however, beckoning with a large clawed hand. Look, I don't think they're going to cook me. And I haven't really eaten today, so I'll go say hello. And that's the path back to the gambling hall. You clamber over the fence and stride towards the creatures. Within a few paces, the smell of cooking meat reaches your nostrils and you see a large pig turning on a spit above the fire. The creature who waved at you, to you has watched you approach. He grins crooked teeth and cocks his head at you in greeting. A spell might be useful here. Yes, I don't have what I need, do I? I don't have the wig. Um, jig. Oh, okay. The international language of mo I'm not going to set fire to them. No, 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 no. Come on, there was a D there. Dud. Make some illusion of treasure. Uh, not yet. Sus. Sure. I'm not expecting great danger here. You cast a spell and a calm voice enters your mind. It tells you that the creatures nearby are friendly enough, though they will retaliate if crossed, and that the meat is fine and good. Once you are reassured, the voice departs. Well then. Greetings, you call. That smells good. It is, the creature agrees. We picked the last one to bite into. He waves at you to sit down. Then you understand his generosity. They are poachers. The pig fat sizzles invitingly. I'll sit with them for now. You take a place in the circle round the fire. The creatures shuffle and shift to make room for you. Um, ask him about the city. I'm new to car, you tell the gathered poachers, implying that I don't know they're poachers. <laughs> what can you tell me about the city? The creatures look between each other, entertained by your question. They suck their teeth and hum and huh. Car is a big place. One finally answers, full of people pushing each other for power. He pulls a leg from a pig, making the meat tear and stretch to demonstrate. You want to avoid all of them if you can. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll share in your food. May I share your pig, you ask? The poachers laugh. Not our pig. There's plenty there. Help yourself. I'll take a bit. 
You reach over the fire and pull off a leg of the pig and devour it. The meat is succulent and rich, and the best meal you've had in a long while. You thank the poachers, who shrug indifferently. I'll ask them about the north gate. Hey, why is it always locked, you know? Well, I won't be staying here for long. I'm headed for the north gate, you tell them. Can you help me find my way? The lead poacher looks at you of interest. You're going into the backlands. Why go there? Oh, my business is my own. You reply, unwilling to trust even these ruffians. The lead poacher nods, taking no offence and accepting your answer. The north gate is a hard thing to open, he says. I've never heard of anyone doing it. Oh, the spell lines? He nods seriously. From across the field, a woman begins to sing. The poachers smile and clap each other on the back. Sirissi is coming. You talk to her. Well, who's Sirissi? Does she sing a magical song that'll trap me and turn me into a fool so they can rob me? Sirissi is our treasure, a man says. Sirissi is how we know what we should do. You'll see. So yeah, I suspect she's controlling them, possibly. By now, the woman has reached the group. She greets the men with a kiss on either cheek. You notice she's carrying something carefully in a cloth. The man beside you beckons her to sit down beside him. This is our visitor. Ah, greetings, Sirissi says. What can I help you with? Well, that is something I'm going to have to tell her in the next episode because I'm hearing sounds which indicate that my recording time is over. So I'm going to leave this one here. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope I didn't completely cock it up by uh, searching the wrong part of the, the many part man. And I'll look forward to seeing you all in the very next one. But I'm going to say goodbye for now and cheerio everyone. <laughs>